Welcome to Mastering Solutions. In this acceleration problem, they want us to solve for the minimum runway length that we will need for the jet to take off. We're comparing this small plane to a large jet, and they say that the small plane, it needs a quarter of a mile runway to take off. They ask us, like we talked about, what is the minimum runway length for the large jet, but they tell us that from rest, the large jet, it needs twice the speed as the plane to take off. So using this, like they say in the problem, we're only going to be using ratios. And so this is a really good problem to work through. It's probably more challenging than you would get on a test because it's more conceptual and just going through the equation. Generally on tests, they'll give you actual numbers that they want you to solve for, but it is a good one to work through. And so um, obviously I don't know what your professors will pick, so it's something to practice, um, but it is a good problem. So they tell us that we know what the initial velocity is. We know there's some sort of a final velocity, acceleration, and the runway length, which we'll say is the delta x. The acceleration for both of them is the exact same, and we don't know the numbers for any of them. It's essentially forcing us to use the algebra and the variables to solve for this without um, getting confused by the numbers. So to do this, we need a kinematic equation that has all of these variables in it. And there is, of course, which is v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2a delta x. We're starting from zero for both of them. So we can go ahead and get rid of the initial velocity because it will be zero. So now we have v final squared is equal to 2a delta x. We're trying to solve for the delta x, so let's divide both sides of the equation by 2a, which will cancel here, and we have 2a. So now delta x is equal to the final velocity squared divided by 2 times the acceleration. We know that this is the formula that we'll be using for the delta x, but how do we use it? And they want us to use a ratio. So what we're comparing is the distance that we need for the jet divided by the distance that we need for the plane. And so now we can plug this equation into here for both of these and then solve that for the minimum distance for the plane. So let's come over here. So we have delta x for the jet divided by the delta x for the plane. And if we plug those in, we get v final squared divided by 2 times the acceleration. And this is all for the jet, of course, divided by the exact same thing for the plane. So v final squared divided by 2 times the acceleration. Now we can simplify it a little bit because the acceleration, they tell us, is the exact same for both of the planes. So that will go away. And now we're simply left with the final velocity for the jet squared divided by the final velocity squared for the plane. In the question, though, they tell us that we need twice the final velocity for the jet than we do for the plane. So if we put that in, let's come down here, we have 2 times the final velocity squared divided by 1 times the final velocity squared. Obviously, we can ignore the 1. It's implied if we just have the variable. So now when we square these, we get 4 times the final velocity divided by the final velocity of the plane will give us the delta x. So the ratio of the two delta x's will be 4 to 1, meaning that we need four times the distance of the runway that we needed for the plane or the jet, which of course, 4 times a quarter is equal to 1 mile. So we just solved for the minimum runway distance that we need for the jet using only ratios, which we found, of course, is a mile.